So we're actually Facebook friends. So I've had the pleasure of watching this journey come to life from the photos that you've been posting. Yeah. And, you know, I have questions. It's been amazing to see. So this is completely hand built, correct? Yes, it is. And there's just one guy who's building this from correct. Okay. Yeah. Is he also making the transformers as well? He's also making the transformers and they're all built to our specification. So literally every nut and bolt is put in this thing by one man. Absolutely. I think that is incredible. And I just think that is the finest dedication to a craft, you know, that I'm seeing on the floor this year. But, you know, there's a long tradition of building stuff like that in your family, right? My history is a, a long one with Telefunken. This is basically our, our new baby. Uh, during the pandemic, I, I had a little extra time and the idea was to concentrate on maybe recording equipment. And then the idea of, of this sort of happened. I follow a lot of DIY forums and have always been watching what's happening with other people making microphones. And uh, I always like um, doing it, trying to do it uh, as realistic and as accurate uh, and to try to do it with the proper name. Yes. I don't like calling something something else. Absolutely. Basically, when I started this, it was originally going to be a Telefunken 670, but it became very clear very quickly that the original trademark was abandoned. In my research, the only registered individual or corporation that has anything to do with Fairchild trademark would be Avid, who bought out Bomb Factory's plug-in a while back. And we're really good friends with the folks over at Avid. So, you know, I called up and spoke with them and they said that they were happy to coexist in the same space as long as we weren't doing anything digital. It sort of fit. I basically filed intent to use three years ago with USPTO, established the Connecticut LLC and the name Fairchild Reporting Equipment, and then established use in commerce by selling the unit. And the way trademark law in America works is that if you don't vigorously enforce your trademark, uh, if you're not in the market with the trademark, if you're not selling a product with the trademark, you can't just squat on it. So uh, much in the same way I was able to revive the Telefunken brand, I've basically done a rinse and repeat here with Fairchild, and uh, it'll be called Fairchild until someone tells me I can. That is amazing. So this one here says Telefunken on it, but I've seen the ones that you posted to your Facebook yeah. that say Fairchild. The, the ones marked Telefunken are our internal test units. There are our demos or our prototypes. Yes. The ones marked Fairchild are production units for sale. Okay, and so if I were to go and purchase one, it's gonna say Fairchild right across the front of it. Absolutely, yeah. And what, what are we looking at for something like this? MSRP is gonna be $35,000. Okay, and you know, when you see something like Arden's Fairchild trading hands for a quarter of a million dollars, this seems like a pretty solid investment with the way that you guys are building gear nowadays. Yeah, absolutely. Someone could either sell a vintage original and outfit their studio with everything and still have a Fairchild. I'm hoping that uh, we'll find customers also who, you know, maybe don't own a vintage original, but want one and can't afford the price tag of a, of a vintage one. You know, with Fairchild was Synchron Microphones. Yeah. And you know, so it's a very interesting thing that you bring up, all right? So Telefunk is located in South Windsor, Connecticut. Darlene Cavalier is a dear friend of mine who is the daughter-in-law of Doc Cavalier. Doc Cavalier owned a studio in Wallingford, Connecticut called Trod Nossel. And Trod Nossel um, was also the location where Synchron Microphone Lab was founded. And they were famous for building the, uh, I might get the number wrong, uh, Seven, excuse me, AU7A microphone. Uh, so the history goes that when uh, it was founded in 1965, and I think it operated for a few years as Synchron Microphone Lab, and when they sold out, uh, they sold to Fairchild. And the uh, microphone became the F22 Fairchild microphone. So they were essentially rebranded as Fairchild and was, was sold as a Fairchild microphone. So in my um, quest for collecting old brands, uh, I've been fortunate enough to prove myself with the Cavalier family, and uh, they are permitting me to use the Synchron name. 
in association with maybe a more economical price microphone in the future. Um, and this kind of keeps the uh, history of Fairchild and Synchron together. That, so that's amazing, and I'm very excited to hear that. Will you be exploring the capsule design that they used in those microphones? Because that was a pretty interesting capsule design. That capsule was based on a AKG CK12 capsule. And yes, that is something we're, we've already done a little of. Uh, our TF, excuse me, our 251T uh, is the titanium edition of the 251. And that uses uh, what we call a CK13 capsule, which is a CK12 that's uh, skinned with, uh, basically it's a, I believe, a, a titanium and aluminum amalgamation on the mylar. Oh, so amazing. It's a silver diaphragm instead of a gold diaphragm. Just like the Synchron was. Just like the Synchron. So we have the membrane already. Uh, we're gonna maybe recreate a lesser priced CK12 that has this different membrane that will maybe be in a microphone in the future that uh, possibly resembles the F22 or uh, AU7A Synchron microphone. Uh, the Synchron microphones were unique in that they were uh, affordably priced. Um, a lot of those designs were before phantom power existed, so they were all battery powered microphones. So, um, and they weren't incredibly popular, um, but they sold enough that they're out there and um, I very much want to try to keep all the history together, especially the cottage industry of microphone making in Connecticut. And I think that is absolutely amazing. And you know, how, how do you know, was Synchron one of the first manufacturers or how far back does that history go? Well, Synchron was maybe one of the first to actually be building microphones in Connecticut. But of course, you know, the Neumann brand and Sennheiser have a long history of having offices in Old Lyme, Connecticut. And the original Telefunken uh, company, uh, their distribution leg was based originally out of um, Stanford, Connecticut. So whether it be distribution or manufacturing, Connecticut's always been a hotbed for, for microphone and recording technology. That is awesome. I had no idea about that. There are a lot of other interesting companies in Connecticut, um, you know, that, that make great products too. Um, you know, Amphenol, uh, oh, yeah. they make a lot of connectors. They have offices in Connecticut. Um, there are a lot of unique businesses in Connecticut in the aerospace. Um, so Redco's out in Connecticut, right? Uh, I believe so. RCI, Vistalite, you know, there's drum manufacturers and all kinds of interesting things happening. Uh, and, you know, um, owning and operating a small studio and soundstage in Connecticut has uh, been a lot of fun. It's our sort of test bed for, for actually hands-on with all this stuff. And, um, yeah, just uh, trying to bring everything back in the original detail, the right way, without cutting corners, uh, built to a standard, not to a price, and uh, trying, nope. to, trying to make the best of what, what, what can be. Hey, I think that's very exciting and thank you for doing it. Someone has to, you know, someone has to do it. Yeah. Well, thank you, Rick. Uh, really enjoy the, uh, talking with you and, uh, I'm going to keep keeping this a personal project of mine, my, my pet project. I really, you know, want to be able to offer the best customer service in the industry in association with Fairchild products. And I think that's amazing. I can't wait to tell everybody about this. When do you expect to be shipping the first units? In June. In June. Awesome. So get your pennies together. Sell your car. It's time. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you again.